Can everyone hear me and see me? Just give me a wave if you can hear me and see me. You need to mute here. Perfect. And you can see me. Excellent. Thank you. Well, that is the fundamentals of uh, having a successful meeting, being seen and heard. And that's, the, that's the secret that I just wanted to share with all of you today. Uh, thank you, all of you, for being here today. I am thrilled, truly thrilled, because this is, uh, you know, they have a very special episode of something. This is a special uh, Living Impact webinar. Um, so welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Nick Kindler. I'm the CEO of Kindler & Company. Uh, my company helps innovators become better communicators. And a little bit later on this morning, I will walk you through exactly what we mean by that. But uh, today, uh, we are going to be hosting the Living Impact webinar and focusing on exploring the future of meetings. Um, now, Living Impact, this webinar series, is really focused on identifying innovators, leaders who are doing things differently in uh, how they connect with audiences. And so um, there are uh, a lot of innovators that I've worked with who are authors, they're scientists, they're academics, they're, and today I have uh, a very special guest who is uh, the CEO of Vizetto. And uh, Vizetto is an organization that has um, identified or created a software, a program called Reactive Suite um, that really helps create more engaging meetings and, uh, and experiences for those who are in the meetings. Now, yes, I'm actually using this today. This is Reactive, and I'm going to get in trouble in a moment for how I'm spelling it. Uh, but I am um, not here to promote Reactive Suite. All I'm doing is using it, and I'm actually here at the Vizetto offices. Our guest today is the CEO of Vizetto, and that is Av Udakuri, who is a friend of mine and also the creator of this software. And I, you know, when I first uh, got ex exposed to, you know, the work that Av was doing, both from a technology and a software side of things, um, I felt like a little bit like I was working with Tony Stark, you know, Iron Man, who was showing me technology that was literally kind of blowing my mind. Uh, and so today we're gonna use it, but we're also gonna talk about the importance of different principles within meetings and how we can shape the future of meetings and what perhaps what those meetings will look like in the, in the very near future. So with that in mind, uh, I'm going to um, stop presenting and I'm going to, let me do that again. I will be mad at me that I did this incorrectly. Um, um, I'm going to uh, invite Av over to the board here. We're just going to distance ourselves and I'm going to move over to the side. And can everyone just give uh, Av a warm welcome? Give him a round of applause. Let's see your kid. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I'll be back in a bit. Hey, thanks, everyone. Appreciate that. Now that, uh, now that uh, uh, you're all here, I'm excited to talk about what I've been doing for the last... 18 months or so. So I'm going to put Nick up as well. So Nick's going to be our co-moderator. So what I set up here is a safe working system where um, I'm going to talk about that later, but um, there's an opportunity to, for Nick to be my panelist. Uh, so I started this company around five, six years ago because I felt that communication fundamentally is going to go through a transformation. And I was there speaking at the top of the mountain going, oh my God, communication is going to go change. And not many people listened, but funnily enough, COVID took my 10-year plans and made it be a year. And I want to talk to you about the psychology of what remote meetings are. So first, let's go back to the beginning. Remember the time we were doing in-person meetings? I feel like, uh, uh, Nick, did your, dad ever, did your dad ever call you up and say, hey, son, I used to walk six feet through snow and with no <laughs> shoes to go to school? Like, are we going to be telling our kids, we used to actually get on a plane to get to a meeting? Well, uh, so my father was a psychiatrist, uh, so he was kind of old school, and he actually walked down the street every day with a briefcase. <laughs> with a briefcase. Um, so, no, but he did have meetings every day, and he was a head of a, a division at a hospital. So, uh, he would have many meetings, and I often would host them at our house, so it's something I so was part of. So then in-person meetings, I don't think that anybody would disagree. They're the most, they're the best experiences. And why? Like, we engaged, right? Mm -hmm. we, we engaged our audiences. We, we kind of built trust. 
And what really happened is, is we were also able to elevate our presence. Like, I don't know of one salesperson who's gonna say, I sold without building trust or without elevating my presence, right? Like, I know people are selling on WhatsApp and WeChat without ever meeting anyone. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> now, the funny thing happened, we went into COVID, all that disappeared. So everyone became untrustworthy. <laughs> they had no presence. We all turned our cameras off and we all just went to a blank PowerPoint screen. So what happened is, is this is me most of the time, or I have some game playing here because I'm not paying attention. I'm not engaged. It's incredibly hard to focus and none of us can really stand out anymore. And that's a real challenge. So how are you? Are you doing a lot of remote meetings with coaching? What's the type of problems you're running into? So prior to, prior to COVID, I was traveling the world, uh, probably two weeks a month, all over. And uh, now I am uh, delivering all of my programs virtually, although I have uh, a, a number of programs that are now happening in November and I have to travel to. So that's the first in 19 months. Absolutely. Yeah. So the challenge that happens is, is everybody's rushing towards hybrid. And this is going to be damn difficult, okay? And I'll tell you why. When we were in person, we were all on the same footing. If I did a good job, I can stand out. When we were all remote, we were all on the same footing. If I did a good job, I would never stand out anyway. None of us were standing out. But with hybrid, how are you going to make sure that the experience to your customers, your partners, your audience is consistent? How are you going to go ahead and engage? Now, the funny thing is, is how do you democratize meetings? This is a question that I love to ask. So, most people, you know what they say? Ab, it's okay, I'm, I'm flying. I'm gonna go back to traveling. But hold on, before you jump to that conclusion, what if you traveled all the way? I'm in Toronto, I fly to Vancouver to meet a customer, and my decision maker decided to be hybrid. Okay, I walk into the boardroom, I thought four people were gonna be there, two people are there, and the two decision makers are gonna go now dial in remotely. We don't have the option of shutting off the remote participants and saying, hey, uh, uh, Rami, right there, I, I can see you, uh, we're communicating and you're now remote, but you're my decision maker, but I don't engage with you. That's actually going to be disaster. That's actually the worst use of funds. So what is the democratization of meetings? We've heard this concept over and over again. Okay, I'm gonna throw some what ifs over here. What if everyone can have an equal voice? I have individuals, no matter where they are, are able to stand up and exude presence. What if Nick and me can have a conversation seamlessly to anyone else that's actually on the call and we can have an equal voice, okay? Anybody should be able to stand up. If I am the presenter, how do I make a memorable impression no matter where I am? Now, if you can do these things, and the challenge that you have is in the democratization of anything is equal access to technology and the tools. So if you're stuck there on tiny little Zoom call and all you can do is watch someone passively present, but then there's three people face to face and they're having a rich, engaging conversation, you're actually cut out from the loop. And that's a real problem. So what I want to suggest is we need technologies that are gonna let you be interactive, that are going to let you embrace a non-linear storytelling. And I've, you've heard this narrative over and over again. And the number of people who come up and go out, I've done sales for 20 years. I know how to sell my product. I have no idea what storytelling is, right? <laughs> like, what in the world is that? And then visually capture feedback. So you know how they, what, what do they say? A picture's worth how many words? A thousand words, we've all heard it, right? Okay. So. We are visual learners. We learn with our eyes and our senses. Today, we shut off all sensory inputs. We get into a call, turn off all cameras, and go to a blank PowerPoint deck. I actually have a really funny joke here. I see all these Facebook metaverse where I'm gonna wear Oculus VR headsets to join a meeting. Here's my nightmare. I'm gonna join an Oculus VR meeting. Somebody's gonna go full screen on a PowerPoint and I'm trapped with a 13 foot PowerPoint deck no matter what direction I'm looking at. Oh my goodness, like they have no ideas as to how to go ahead and engage. So I have a little story that I love to share. Um, I'm in Toronto, deep lockdown for many months. I'm sure a lot of you guys know. 
Uh, I have two daughters. One, the youngest one is eight years old, and she's in grade three. And, you know, as any dad, I am put on top of a pedestal. She thought that I did cool things. She saw me do remote work one day. She turns to me and goes, Daddy, I thought you were an engineer. You do cool things. All you do is talk on the phone. Do you do any, do you do any real work? And I had to sit her down and try to convince her that daddy working is not the same as her talking to her cousins. But I started realizing really quickly, remote meetings suck. I hate them. I want to travel back. I love the flexibility, but I'm not engaged. I'm not focused. And you know what I do? I just look at my phone. I play some game or I'm res responding back to some text message. I'll be the first to admit. And most of my customers, partners know as soon as, because my face shows it, right? I'm completely disconnected. And they're like, ah, you're listening, right? And I'll be like, yeah, of course I am. And I can repeat back the last five seconds of what happened, right? So what happens to me is then I kind of start doing some research as to why people disengage. Why do they disconnect? And there's some really interesting findings that we don't apply to how we conduct meetings. What happens, number one, is in our whole professional lives, we've been taught to focus on data. Look, take a whole bunch of data, cram it into a PowerPoint, and then throw it up onto the end customer, right? Or your partner or your supplier or whoever. And that data will make its own presentation. Well, guess what? We comprehend and we process information, but we absolutely have no memories. And I'm going to challenge you guys. I want you to put down two numbers onto the chat, okay? I want you to put down the number of meetings that you, you think you had last month. Okay, so if you're saying it's an average of five, six, seven, pick, you know, 10 days, 20 days, tell me the number. Now tell me how many you actually remember on the spot. Okay, how many meetings do you have and how many do you actually remember? The reason I'm doing this is I'd like to see if you all meet my statistical norms. And I'm going to have my good friend here come up with uh, some of the information from the chat over here. So, so uh, my friend Daniel suggested that he had 50 meetings, and he's, yes. he does a lot of terrific uh, insight meetings. Uh, he remembers none, till no one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, anybody else? We've got uh, Tom Appleyard, another uh, incredible, uh, okay. really bright gentleman. Uh, uh, Tom Appleyard, 60 to five. Awesome. Uh, Robert Bura. Uh, 50 to 15. Wow. And Remy Raman, uh, 140 to 20. Uh, Nina has suggested uh, she's kind of a 3 to 1, 15 to 5. Wow. And okay. uh, VJ has said uh, 35 to 50 meetings. Remember, few. Uh, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, New Line Interactive has suggested that it's uh, 60 20. And um, awesome. Michael so, says 40, and uh, remember, most if not all. Hmm. Oh, wow. Somebody has a photographic memory, so we don't need you here on this call. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so what's interesting is, uh, is I'll tell you what my statistical distribution has been. Uh, generally, 5 to 7 on, on a day has been the average. And what I've discovered is people have anywhere between 60 to 80 a month. So you're kind of in that perfect average. Now, the less meetings that you have, obviously, the more you'll remember. So the individual who only has 15 out of 5, that's a good way to remember more meetings is to just not have any, right? So <laughs> now, the funny thing I say is, uh, you know what they say, the tree falls in a forest and no one was there to hear it, did it make a sound? Have you heard that uh, yep, adage, yep, right? Yep. Okay, so I would like to ask you, if you go to meetings and you don't remember anything, did the meeting happen? <laughs> Right. That's good. So, first. <laughs> so the challenge is this, like, so, and then what I've discovered is about 7%. In my poll of about 600 to 700 people, only 7% of information is remembered, or meetings are remembered, and basically 90% of all content that you hear in a meeting is forgotten. Can you guess in how many hours? One. <laughs> Well, well, hopefully a little bit more, but it actually turns out to be about 48 hours, oh, right? Wow. okay. So 48 hours is where our brain, okay, so what happens is, is when you go to sleep, your brain is making a lot of inference as to what should I keep, what should I forget, and within two days, most irrelevant information that did not make a memorable impression is forgotten. So what that brings me to is, let's actually take a look, let's dissect our meetings, okay? So I'm now going to remove all all of this clutter and I'm gonna to go to a meeting most of the time 
all of you good folks join a meeting, you get into a PowerPoint, and I talk, 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 talk. Okay? Now, if I spoke like this for 15 minutes, you're pretty disengaged because there's a few psychological reasons. Now, let's just say you had a question for me. You wanted to engage. You snapped me out of my little daydream here, and you go, ah, show me the number, show me the contract, show me this, show me that. Okay, well, I'm going to start pausing. Let me, I don't have that prepared for you, Nick. Let me pull up the information. This is what I call micro frustrations. And what happens in this is, is now I pause here. And what, what do we normally do? We just talk to this. We talk, 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 talk. How does a real meeting happen? Look, Mr. Nick, I want you to hit this as a number. We've already done an assessment of your business for the last eight months. We think we can keep this trend going. And you had a few questions on your contract. Let's fix, that's been fixed. That's been addressed. Now we have to have a conversation about that right there because I went back to the team. Now, that to me is a visual conversation. And there's a phenomenal difference. Let me go back to just uh, me right here. And there's a pretty huge difference in this visual conversation that we rarely have. Now, I want you to contrast what happens in a face-to-face -face meeting. So in a face-to-face -face meeting, going back to my room camera here, Nick, we're having a banter. Yep. I look at you. I have a conversation. I pick up a piece of paper. Thank I you. can do that, right? Thank it's, you. it's an amazing, what is this? It's a tactile, it's, a, it's an emotional experience. You connect with individuals, you get to point. <laughs> it's amazing how little these type of differences actually make. You get to interact. Now that, to me, is stories. See, the stories that people tell you about, you know, they say, make your presentation a story. It's actually not, it's a figurative story. And when you read a story and it's an engaging book, even though there's no technology, do you remember, how many books do you remember? Lots. Exactly, yeah. right? Your book count is way high because why? It's actually painting a picture. You know what they say, paint a picture. Why? Oh, and it's about shapes, it's size, it's, it's movement, it's smell, it's, it's all sorts of sensory input gets built up. So this is how our brain works. Our brain actually does not have to do an activity to feel like it did an activity. That's the beauty of amazing books. You just read a passage, you feel like you lived it, don't you? Mm -hmm. Right? And if you can do this, and here's the neuroscience, seven to eight areas of your brain have to engage. Every time a new area of your brain engages, that means that your brain goes, oh, this is more important, this is more memorable. I will document this into my long-term memory. It becomes more, uh, uh, more critical. So when you go to sleep, it gets indexed and suddenly you get to retain information. How many of you still remember a class that you took in grade four or grade five? Go back to elementary school. Did you have a favorite teacher? And do you remember a class? Everybody, For can sure. you just tell Nick again? Like, do you remember class? Right? Tell me why you remembered the class. Just give me a quick little synopsis. Who do you remember? And let's shout out to our grade school teacher. Nick, who do you remember? Well, I, I, I'm going to go back not all the way to grade school, sure. but it's far enough to high school. <laughs> um, I had an amazing English teacher who was charismatic. I also had a fairly uh, unhappy, prejudiced um, math teacher okay. that I could recite uh, every story about every experience. So not a good teaching experience, but a good story. <laughs> but a good story. Yeah. You know, do all of you have the same experiences? Anybody respond back and So we've got Marlene said yes. She did. Uh, Marlene, do you want to just give us a little bit more uh, uh, or and or VJ, whoever can drop it in? What yeah, tell us a story about a teacher you remember. Do you want them to go off mute and yeah, hear it? Yeah, sure. If you don't awesome. mind, uh, 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 Marlene, if you don't mind going off yeah. mute and sharing. Sure, no, no problem. problem. <laughs> um, well, I have a good grade teacher named Mrs. Goldstein, and I don't, she was, she was a good storyteller. She was also very visually interesting. I don't know, she did an exercise, she just read everything with passion, she really engaged us. So I don't know if I can remember super specific, you know, things she did, but I always remember her and I would say she's my okay. picture. So what happened is, is you just talked about painting the picture, okay? Your energy has to change, your camera has to be on, I have to be visual, 
And you already said all of the key things, which is the sensory landscape requires that to go ahead and happen. So what happens in most of our meetings today is we're productive, we're getting our job done. But to me, productivity is about these robots that can go get the job done. That's not, to me, our team health. Our team health is not gonna be a function of, Marlene, you suddenly speak and go, ah, did you send out the email? I snap out of my game or I snap out of my text message and go, got it, I'll, I'll make sure it happens, okay? You know that people are not engaged. You can see body language energy. You lean forward, your eyes open up, you start absorbing information. And that, to me, is engagement. That engagement is built absolutely on a golf course. <laughs> it can be. <laughs> absolutely yeah. over beers. Yeah. <laughs> um, but absolutely not over most Zoom meetings, right? Yeah, you know, there's one innovator that I had a ch chance to work with not long ago who said that, and I'm quoting her, uh, her name is Marty Constant. She's a workplace futurist. And she said uh, that work happens in the in-between places. Yes. And I, I just love that quote because it, it's, it actually really encapsulates exactly what we're talking about here. Right, absolutely. So let me show you a few tricks. No matter what you do, I'll show you my teachings as to what you can do. First of all, there's a fundamental problem with slides. What happens these days is we think that the slide is the presenter. This is how most of your view is. Zoom teams, all sorts of things, and there's a whole bunch of problems with presenter mode, all sorts of things like that, which I won't go into. But we think that this slide is the presenter, and we don't. I'll tell you a little psychological thing. You know that you can read 10 times faster than I can say it out. If I showed you a paragraph of text, you would have read it like that in a microsecond. You scan, your brain just scans through and just reads it. Then when I talk to it, you already make an assumption you know what I'm gonna say. Then you tune it up, then you go, Ab is going to talk about this, I got it, no problem. And then I go back to what I'm doing. For all you know, I'm talking about how this slide is the wrong information. <laughs> you wouldn't even catch that. And the second thing, notes. Uh, there's a bunch of people here, I'm sure, you take notes. And how many times do you actually ever go back, Nick, and actually read your notes? And do you, I know we all take notes, but do you ever dissect your notes from three months ago? Um, uh, m mostly because I work with clients and I'm coaching them and I sure. refer back to a summary of content. Sure. That's really important, but I also have to record it. You record it. Yeah. But when you have 200 hours, let's go back to this. We have anywhere between 50 to 140 hours of recordings or notes. There's no way we're going to go back and refer to all that. So to me, visual means, okay, I'm going to take notes right here. There's column A. Okay, you don't like this option, let me get rid of it, but you love this, let me move that over. Do you agree with this? Where is the problem here? You know, that to me is building visual consensus. You're, you're actually involving. So if Vijay or Rami, you come back and say, I have an issue with it, though, you know what? Let me do that. Let me mark it down. It goes towards an enormous amount of building of trust. That's critical. Now, to me, uh, yeah, uh, I graduated U of T Engineering in, uh, in uh, 96. My first job, I was on, remember MSN Messenger, buddy? I did. Yeah, yep. MSN Messenger, and I was on Skype, right? Okay, today I'm on Slack and I'm on Teams. Like, literally nothing has changed. There's been no innovation as to how we process. And so to me, this is all storytelling is you don't have to dramatically change everything that you're doing. You can tell your story, be nonlinear, you know, don't be stuck to a PowerPoint, pull up information that you need, pull up the type of content which I can show you if you're interested, illustrate your ideas, and sometimes illustrate is as simple as circle something, underline something, highlight something. It gives you an opportunity to be visual. And here's the biggest one. Your content is only part of the story. Your presence is absolutely critical to how people engage. So yes, all the books and all the content that you read about, about turning on the cameras, it's a great first step, but if you are going to present with purpose or passion, you have to go ahead and engage people and make them feel like it's not your content, they're connecting with you as an individual. So. Nick, what do, you, what do you think about where we're at? Uh, well, uh, first of all, I gotta, I have to address one comment, and just for everybody that probably saw it in the chat, New Line Interactive, I don't know the name of the, of the person, um, but 
this person in primary school, their teacher told them that the world was coming to an end, and literally at War of the Worlds them, it was like they believed it was happening. So um, we're not going to do anything like that today. Uh, but but I do but I do think that you know all joking aside. Uh, that you know the way we present and the way we run meetings is changing, and that world is in that the version of that world is coming to an end. And I, I do want to talk um, about the future, but before okay. we do, and, and by the way, everybody, uh, uh, like if you have a question, um, either raise your hand or drop it into the chat, and we will address it. I've got a bunch of things I want to ask Av, and then I'm going to uh, kind of come back up and present uh, some principles that I think will be very helpful that apply uh, all of this that we've been talking about so far. Um, uh, so please, share your questions, uh, and I've got them here. But the first thing is, uh, I want to go back. Uh, to You know, you started by asking, you know, do I remember my father or parents having meetings, and I do. Uh, Av, what, why do we have them? Like, what's the purpose of a meeting before we talk about the future of a meeting? Yeah, I mean, yeah, for, for sure. I mean, obviously I can drill down every sales call and say there's a discovery call, there's, a, there's an onboarding call, there's a cold call, there's a lead gen call, and there's a marketing call, design meeting. So I actually look at the, uh, what do they call it, the uh, taxonomy of meetings? Yeah. Or, and I think that there's a researcher out there that described 56 types of meetings, okay? Yeah. Forget all the technical. Yeah. I would say that we're reading, our meeting is the fundamental way that we're connecting. Like, mm. it's not about, if information, data can easily be shared. I can send you a deck beforehand and I can tell you what the quote is. Why do I need to get on a meeting to show you the deck that I can easily send you? You know how they say, should have been an email? Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> should have been an email. You're just going to talk to the slide. To me, meetings about connecting. All my work in my professional, personal has been, uh, has been uh, engaging meetings that have made, allowed me to make decisions. Uh, they're the dates, right? Yeah. Like, can you send a PowerPoint deck to, to, your, to your first date? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think they would want to hear from me, actually. But I'll, I'll, yes. in all seriousness, you know, I think you mentioned something that I, I find really interesting, which is how, there is, um, how do we democratize meetings so that everybody has a share and a voice? Because they might be one of the more um, autocratic experiences. You know, even now, like, we, we're, we're asking everybody to participate, but either there's a reason why we're not hearing from people when, or maybe they, there are no questions. How do we truly create a democratic experience in meetings? So democratic experience means that you have the right to participate. Absolutely. Okay. Some people yep. will not have the right to, they do not want to and they want, okay? Yep. But first start off with the people who actually want to have a great experience, right? Like anybody in sales, anybody in marketing, anybody in business, Connecting to people is absolutely critical. Yeah. Now, what happens in that is, is there's only a few things we can control. We can control our content, we can control us, we can control our stage, right? So I had a great customer conversation a few uh, couple of weeks ago where they said, Ab, I want my meetings to be a, a play. I want them to feel like they're watching an experience and, and they're a company that just sells uh, um, uh, I think cloud storage or something of that nature. But he's like, you know, we sell cloud storage, but we have a story to tell. We're going after this company versus that company, and the ethos or the principles behind why we're doing it a certain way and how we pick our customers is absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. We're not boiling the ocean going after AWS, or we're not going after Microsoft or Azure. We're going after a specific customer and we have a story to tell. Mm -hmm. So how do I translate that story? And that exactly is the type of things that made me realize. So democratization is, I love the flexibility of hybrid, okay? If my daughter was sick today, which she is because she got kicked out of school again for coughing mm -hmm. and a COVID test, but I wanna be home and I want to go ahead and participate, but I don't wanna feel like my career was held back or, or, or oh my God, my client didn't get to see me or there's a decision maker that I didn't engage. That's democratization. Mm -hmm. If you can do that from anywhere, anyhow, and and that's where people are going VR. Everybody's gonna wear these headsets, but I don't think that that's democratization of a meeting. I think that's creating a barrier of technology for people who don't know how to use it, who are not gonna get into it, and we're all not Minecraft wizards who are gonna go ahead and build up boardrooms <laughs> using blocks, like I mean, right? Yeah. So that's what democratization is, having an equal voice. So, you know, you, one might argue that Zoom and MS uh, Teams and um, other tools like that have actually helped to democratize, but then it's created 
this, uh, this illness that we've heard called Zoom fatigue. So how do we fight that? Okay, so what I'm gonna draw here with my crude little art here is I'm gonna give you a big stage with a whole bunch of spotlights. You're, you're an actor, right? Like you, you've well, dabbled in, in the arts. <laughs> in the past, yes, I have, yes. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you this. Before we can say, nobody had access to a stage. Would you agree? Like, oh, it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay, what if I gave everybody a stage? Every neighborhood had a free stage and you can go there. Does everybody automatically become an actor without a director or a script? No, right? Okay, what Zoom has done and what Teams has done is make access to the stage. It's a connection pipeline. I connect you with me, mm -hmm. myself with a bunch of people. But we all show up with no script, with no directors, no lighting, no, and we all go, okay, let's ad lib something. <laughs> and the challenge that you have is the PowerPoint as a script is a great starting visual aid. Your data is a great starting visual aid. But we have to retrain ourselves as to how are we going to go ahead and, and conduct a play, right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the biggest challenges that I see, but it's not hard. Because you know what happens? When we are face to face, we conduct plays all the time, okay? And that's the, that's the psychological shift that a lot of people don't realize. I do an amazing job. How have you done business for 20 years, 30 years? Well, I got great connections. How did you develop that connection? It's not just banter, it's about going down deep and how do you do that so absolutely so to me zoom teams all of these are giving you a great platform but you need tools that are going to help you conduct that play so if um yeah, and i just want to pause and just say please if you have a question for myself or for av we will have time at the end as well but if you have yeah any throw questions, questions in, in you real time don't, you can even jump off mute and and uh we'll be happy Ra to take raise them. your hand right now so um i while we're waiting for that, I'll jump in with another question. Is there anyone? And nope, I don't yet. see anyone that has it. Um, uh, what I'd like to ask is, you know, people may be wondering what this setup is. Ah. And so can, can you just explain what, what you've got going on here with uh, this setup? Because it is unique. Not everyone has access to this right now, right? Okay, so I'm going to show you this. By the way, uh, I just use off-the-shelf hardware. What we do is we're putting together pieces me as an individual, our company, we're not selling hardware or anything. I'm just tracking with the power of meetings. Uh, give me a second because my, do you have your iPhone? Right, right there, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I am going to sure. come back to this. No problem. No problem. Sure. Here we go. My phone has to boot up. I forgot. I turned it off. Give me no a second. No problem. So let's, let's come back to that question while my phone boots up. Do you want me to jump on Zoom here? Would that be easier? No, no, no. Okay. Are you on my Wi-Fi? Uh, yeah. Uh, can you swipe down on your iPhone and connect to the board? I can try. Yeah, screen mirroring. Yeah. Do you see Av Studio? Yeah. Can you connect to it, please? Um. No. Okay. I can't. Or it. So that's fine. I'll fix it in a second. Okay. Give me a second. Let's keep going on. Okay. So while uh, while we're we're going through, I I, I guess I I wanted to. And I don't know if you can double up on this, and we'll, maybe we'll come back so you can show people what, what's happening in a moment. Mm -hmm. But okay, so we've talked about why meetings are important. We've talked about the um, the psychology of meetings. Mm -hmm. What's the future look like? Well, the future of meetings is going to allow you to feel this immersive experience where you don't feel like you're losing out. And that's the critical thing. Now, part of that is going to be things like the metaverse and whatnot. I'm not, don't knock me, uh, I'm not knocking it, I'm not disagreeing with it. I just think that access has to be really critical, right? Yeah. Everybody has to be able to say, hey, I can access this. Yeah. Um, I'm connected, by the way. No, you are. Yeah. Perfect. Sorry about that. My phone uh, decided to, to I, I actually forgot I'm going to use this. Go to camera. Oh, sure, go ahead. If you don't mind. Not at all. So I'm actually going to show you my little setup. Uh, you need to show me where your camera app is. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Just go to the camera app. There we go. Okay, awesome. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to show you what I'm doing here is I'm at, this is just a big touch screen that I can run Windows or my OS on. And while I'm sharing over here, I have every one of you on an audience monitor. So I have a camera looking at me. This is just a Logitech off-the-shelf camera. See, part of the problem with meetings is the ability to see body language. 
And when we just share our screens and share our faces, you lose a lot. So I love my energy changes when I stand in front of an audience. I feel like I've invited you, but this is what I have. I got Nick sitting here in a hybrid environment as my co-moderator, and I set up a secondary camera for him. So this is again an off-the-shelf camera uh, called, uh, it's an Inex, and actually it's kind of cool. I love this camera because if you stand up and walk, it actually has an AI that keeps following you. And if you just pause for a second, yeah, it'll frame you. Yeah, and so what that does is in my webinars and meetings, it really allows me to not worry about these details of what's going on. And again, what's cool is, is almost every bit of this technology is completely off the shelf. So I have been experimenting, buying all sorts of tech to try and see what can people do. So you literally can change your whole perspective. Don't use the laptop camera. Have a camera on the side looking at you working on the laptop and share that. You'll see how dramatic the difference is going to be. And these are the type of things that I think the future of meeting is going to be. Get a good light. Make sure you're well lit. But the problems that happen with the laptop camera, there's numerous. As I move, it disappears. You don't realize how you're framing. And not all of us are actors to land our mark, right, Nick? Like, That's I mean, right. <laughs> yeah, that is correct. You know what, Av, I think um, uh, what I'll do is I I'm going to jump up and share some of the principles of the work that we do because it's so applicable to what you're saying here. Okay. So, um, and don't go away. I, I know this is your office, but if you can stick around because yeah, I do want to stay in and uh, get questions from you at, uh, for you at the end. And I'm just going to jump up and dive in here. And the, the pen, pen is over there. Is over here. Perfect. Um, First of all, uh, let's just uh, take a moment and thank Av for that uh, terrific presentation and his insights. Can we just give him a round of applause? Uh, thank you. I love seeing the people on video. Thank you for putting your cameras on. I know it's not always easy, but it's uh, appreciated as a presenter. Um, I want to just take a moment and talk about some of the principles that uh, are underlying my programs. Uh, I actually wrote a book uh, early in COVID called Impact, Simplify, Transform, and Perform Pitches and Presentations. Um, I wrote it and I do all the work that I do and for some of you who are in my programs, uh, I totally appreciate uh, you um, listening to this because you've heard me share it before, but I fund fundamentally believe that it's not uh, money that makes the world go round, it is communication. And uh, not long ago, I had the privilege of working with an organization called Medicine by Design. It was through Mars, a partnership with Mars, um, and actually U of T here in Toronto, University of Toronto. Um, and they were a group of regenerative scientists who needed to learn how to commercialize their content, their, their research. And I was working with a whole number of them, one of them, a woman by the name of Laura, um, I was on my second coaching session with her, and I just couldn't understand what she was presenting about. I had no clear idea. So um, I took a different approach, and I said, Laura, tell me about what happens from the moment you get into the lab to the moment you leave. And she said to me, Nick, uh, I check the readings of, in the lab. Uh, I check to see if the regenerated pancreas is still functional, and then I move on. And I said, hold on a second, Laura. Do you mind? repeating that last part, did you say regenerated pancreas? And she said, yeah, uh, th that's not the challenge. The, the challenge isn't regenerating a pancreas. The challenge is um, vascularizing the pancreas so that it works within the system of the body. Now, I'm going to pause for a moment. I did not know, this was a number of years ago, that you could regenerate a pancreas, let alone other organs. Can I get a show of hands um, if you did not know that either currently, please? Thank you for your honesty, Adam, David, nice to see you, VJ, wonderful. Um, and for those of you that I can't see, uh, just put a, a yes or a no if you knew this into the chat. Uh, uh, let me know what you, you're seeing there as it populates. Now the reason I share this, the reason I ask is, um, first of all, this was a, a breakthrough moment of the coaching um, because I was able to truly understand what she was doing and she was now able to communicate the purpose of her work not just to myself, but to anybody that might finance this. But more importantly, if she's able to vascularize a pancreas, she's going to solve or cure one of the world's biggest challenges, which is diabetes. Now, 
451 million people live with diabetes each year. Diabetes kills more than 1.6 million worldwide. And for those of you in the healthcare space, uh, you probably are familiar with some of these statistics. Uh, these statistics are also very important to me as I have a loved one, a mother who is type 1 diabetic for more than 61 years. And so this is important. And I think all of you uh, will know at least one or more people that are impacted by this. The reality is, Laura's work is important. It's very important because she's going to help solve one of the world's biggest problems. Now, you may be sitting there and saying, I'm a creative director, or I'm a, a scientist or an academic. The reality is, you and your work are important too. And uh, what we're talking about today is meetings. And meetings are the function of work. It's how we connect with each other on a daily basis. And presentations and pitches and agendas and how we connect with each other in these meetings are how we move our work forward. Every day, there are 269 billion emails sent across the globe. And only a third of them are opened. Now, some of you are going to say, that's because they're all spam. But we know this. How many of you have unread emails from people in your inbox? I see a big smile from David, and I can see some, a bunch of ch chuckles going on. I am just as guilty of this. It's, it's really hard to uh, catch up and keep up. 46%, um, this is a scary statistic, 46% of employees rarely leave a meeting knowing what to do next. The purpose of meetings are to help drive your business or ag uh, important agendas forward. And if people don't know what to do, we have a real problem. Here's another one. 86% of employees blame poor communication for workplace failures. And 65% of employees would forego a pay raise to see their manager fired. So any of you male <laughs> managers in there, you're all terrified right now. This is reality. This is truth. So. We have a problem. Leaders, and we're all here, I'm including all of you as leaders, have a problem. And I know what these problems are because I live them, but I've also done a survey with a group of my executive clients early on in COVID. I asked them, what are the top three problems you're facing? And yes, there were all kinds of things like access to individuals, but it all boiled down to three things. The first, time. Hey. Is anyone here time starved? Or does everyone here, is anyone on this call have so much time they just don't know what to do with it? Right, I know this, Adam, come on, you're being sarcastic. Right, everyone is time starved. All leaders are time starved. And here's what happens. When we don't have enough time, we don't have enough time to get clear on our messaging and our thinking. And this creates an even bigger problem with leadership. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't have time and you're not clear, you're a bad leader. Far from it. That's not, my, that's not my call. What I can say is that as leaders, if we're not clear on our messaging, on our strategy, on what we want to communicate and connect with our teams, we create a whole other world of problems. Because when there is a void of communication, it gets filled by someone or something. And that's the ultimate leadership problem that we want to avoid. So time, clarity, and leadership. And I talk about uh, a number of principles that help us tackle these problems. And I'm going to share them with you. And then I'm going to share with you uh, a program that I'm offering. And in fact, a couple of you are in that. Uh, and so bear with me while I just talk about these principles. And if you're interested in getting the book, you can get it at impactbook.ca. Uh, Jerry Hunter, who's my head of partnerships, can drop that in the chat for everybody. Let me just walk you through this the three key principles of communicating with impact. So the first is simplify. We need to simplify our messaging. And we can do that using structure. Now, some of you may be saying, this is not rocket science, Nick. I know I need to simplify. Well, if you did know how to simplify, you'd do it all the time. But uh, as I joke, this. Um, uh, principle of simplification helps rocket scientists communicate. It can, and it helps me teach rocket scientists how to translate their important work, or oncologists, or dermatologists, or ophthalmologists, or uh, 
uh, AI roboticists. It doesn't matter what area of work you're in. Simplifying using structure will help you get clear. So that's the first thing. The second is transform. And this is my way of talking about taking that structure and translating it. Translating it in a way that connects. And this, in the transformation side of things, is all about storytelling. And it's all about language. Um, maybe I need to, it looks a little fuzzy there, but hopefully you can see that. Yeah. It's all about language. Now, um, when we're looking at transforming, we're taking that, that rigid, structured messaging content that we've spent time developing in the simplified phase, and we're transforming it using story and language. And then we're embracing the final piece, which we've also talked about today, is the mindset of performance. So simplify using structure, transform using storytelling and language, and yes, there's a neuroscience to this, and then performance. We need to perform with a mindset that it matters, which is why I love using this tool today. It's a real treat for me. If you were to see me in my usual setting, I would be standing, I would be presenting directly to camera, but this gives me a whole other uh, performance ability that isn't normally available. Now, what happens when we embrace these three principles? The first is access. Um, as uh, Laura, the regenerative scientist experience, if you're, or any specialist will experience, as soon as you start to simplify and transform, you open the door to content that was previously inaccessible. We are going to develop an understanding a deeper understanding of the content, or sorry, the listener or the viewer is going to have a deeper understanding of the content. And, and I've mentioned this as well, which is vital, is we're going to connect. We're going to create a connection, a deeper connection, access, understanding, and connection. When we simplify, when we transform, when we embrace a mindset of performance, and in the very middle, it's impact, which is what we all want. We want to have it in our work. We want to have it with our clients. We want to have it in our industries, with our associations, in our communities, with our families. We want to have an impact. And when we take the time to simplify, transform, and perform, and, uh, and create a deeper, greater access, deeper level of understanding, and greater connection, we can do that. I just got a, a 10 minute notice from, uh, from Av. So um, what I want to do is just explain what this consists of. When we talk about simplify, we want to uh, dive into ideation and innovation and free ourselves up to do that. We want to look at purpose and clarifying that purpose. And I actually have a very specific, unique way of doing that. And a canvas, which is our tool, our structure to help uh, guide that messaging. Transformation, the neuroscience of storytelling, which Adam has already started to talk about, we dive deeply into uh, in our programs and in our coaching. We also use a tool to help you build stories so that they succeed every time you deliver them. And we talk about emotional language. And finally, there's a whole bunch of performance stuff. Yes, today we shared a little bit about technical setup, but there are things that you can do whether you're in person or virtual to help set yourself up for success every time you present. But there's also things like status, body language, facial expression. And I think I saw Catherine, uh, uh, Kathy here, who is a voice expert and she has, I can tell you, she is one of the leaders in this area of voice. How do we engage uh, using our voice in a different way? Rehearsal techniques, visuals, and we even do a little bit of a showcase. So that are, those are the principles. I'm going to just jump ahead and talk to you. Uh, can I just share for two more minutes about the impact program? Is that OK? Can I get a thumbs up from a few folks? Just to make sure. OK, thank you. And, and uh, bear with me. I'm, I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone because although I love presenting and performing, I'm not uh, the ultimate salesperson. So, and I've even had terrific clients of mine say, you know, Nick, you really need to work on this. So I'm going to share with you my program and I'm going to show you what uh, it consists of and how you can get involved. The program, as I've mentioned, allows you to get clear, save time, and stand out. It's called the Impact Accelerator. Um, it includes workshops every month. It includes group coaching and um, office hours 
as well as an online uh, learning portal. And we even do a showcase at the end of the program. Um, let me just tell you about one gentleman who went through. His name is John. Uh, he is a uh, ophthalmologist, but that's not what we were focusing on. John uh, from the Bahamas was developing a new currency, a digital currency with the AI group at U of T. He simplified uh, using structure. He transformed the content using storytelling. And he performed with gesture and vocal techniques and facial expression. And then he called me. We had a Zoom chat. And this is what he said. Before the meeting, I used the framework, just like you said. And my client said, I have never heard anyone explain anything, something so complicated, so clearly. And then he laughed. It was an infectious laugh. He said, it worked like a gem. And he went on and on. Lovely man and super uh, happy for his success. So his ideas matter. Your ideas matter. Let me share with you a few people whose ideas have taken we've taken to the next level. Uh, Dr. David Hunter, he has uh, created something called the um, uh, Blink Scanner to help children with amblyopia. Uh, I had a chance to work with him and his team at the Boston Children's Hospital, and a uh, truly remarkable leader. Uh, Dr. Afsana Aladi, she um, was previously in Toronto. She's now at the Mayo Clinic, and she has delivered hundreds of presentations globally about her area of research, which is uh, two very challenging dermatological conditions. One is called PG. I don't recommend you Google it. Five minutes. Five minutes? Thank you. And finally, Floyd. Floyd is the founder of C4 Media. He created the, the uh, CEOs for Basic Income here in Canada, which was a grassroots movement. Uh, he ended up doing a TED Talk and is a leader in this space now. So, their ideas matter, your ideas matter. And do you have an idea? Do you have something that you want, a business, an, uh, an idea within your business, or something that you want to engage the outside world in? Um, and my question to you is, if you're not going to do it, then who is? Because somebody will. Somebody will. So, let me tell you a little bit about the Impact Accelerator in the last five minutes. This is the cost of it. It's not. But if I were to go out um, and uh, deliver this to a company it, as piecemeal, it would cost $11,150. The program is if you want to improve your messaging, if you are an expert or a burgeoning expert, uh, if you are responsible for developing tech or even complex solutions, uh, if you find yourself speaking in public a lot, um, and you're promoting your business, or if you just want to communicate clearly and concisely, this program is for you. And I had two choices. I could make it very, very expensive um, and, uh, and make it exclusive, or I could make it really, really inexpensive but not have high touch. I actually went in the middle. I wanted to have a high touch experience um, for those who are part of the program. So um, this is not the final price. What we're looking at, oh, uh, I'm going to add a few things I forgot. We're going to add uh, the learning portal. We're going to add uh, the impact community, which all of you uh, are now uh, kind of joining uh, early stages as part of these kinds of workshops. Um, and so the new price is, thank you for your patience. I'm going to jump ahead. Thank you. The new price that I'm going to is, um, $775 per month for six months, or $4,700. And I have two other bonuses that I want to throw in. Um, the one thing I want to do is I want to add a mindset workshop, which is really important. Having worked with leaders from Singularity University and TED, I want to make sure that we include this concept of shifting our mindset about our content. And uh, because I've had this terrific host. I want to include Reactive Suite, which is a $125 value as well. I'm going to keep the price the same, $775 a month for, uh, for six months, uh, and we're $4,700 for an upfront fee. And it's got a 30-day guarantee. If you, if, you're, uh, uh, if you don't like it for any reason, um, you get all of your money back. So $775 a month, or $4,700. Uh, uh, up front for six months, and that is the program. And I really appreciate you you listening in and, and uh, participating. 
my, my, um, I'm going to put a link in. If you're interested, actually, uh, Jerry, um, uh, Jerry, if you don't uh, mind coming on sorry. Uh, video. Question. Canadian yeah. dollars or U.S. dollars? That's in U.S. dollars. Thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, uh, Nick, I am, uh, I'm right here. here. Um, uh, uh, great, great insights, great tech, tech setup. setup. I really enjoyed uh, uh, your table 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 meetings. Uh, thanks. Uh, Jerry, um, my, if just, uh, Jerry is my head of partnerships. Thanks so much. If you're interested, just uh, raise, your, uh, raise your hand and Jerry will uh, reach out to you and make sure that he sends you a link to connect. Any questions? Uh, any absolutely. questions for Av, myself, anyone? Uh, I love to connect people as well. So if anyone has any questions, let me know. Can you click me up? Yeah, Go to cameras. Go to cameras. Cameras, cameras, cameras. I'm looking here. 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 Oh, thank you. And put the room up. Perfect. That's it. Perfect. There's Av. There we go. And, and by the way, I just wanted to add that everything that you saw here just runs off your laptop. You don't need any of this setup. And uh, I can show you for $30 how you can go ahead and install it and, uh, and power your meetings up. Like, so it, none of this, what you see here, do not be afraid of cost. You literally can do all of this right from, from, from your laptop, from your home. Uh, this is an added bonus to be able to do this. I love this studio, but uh, just wanted to make sure everyone yeah. here is aware. Any questions? And come off mute. Uh, I'm really happy to, to have a yeah, conversation. Yeah, for sure. We are, how are we doing on time? We are one minutes. minute. Yeah, so, a few more minutes we can Randy, have questions. you're off mute. Did you have a question? No, oh, okay. thank you. No, my <laughs> pleasure. It's good to well, see you. I'm hoping that this was a memorable experience. I would like for you to go back next week or two weeks from now and without you having to take notes, did you feel connected with the conversation that me and Nick had? And if that's the true testament, then what if we can teach you to do that with every one of your other meetings, I guess is going to be the real answer, isn't it? Yes, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and, uh, I just, I just wanted, wanted to uh, chime in and say hi to everything. My name is uh, Jerry, Jerry Hunter, Hunter here, and I'm head of partnerships, partnerships and, and uh, it's exciting to talk to you guys and then find out how we can uh, uh, collaborate, partner, and get an impact. And uh, I dropped drop my calendar, calendar link uh, in the chat there, so make sure, sure to click that link, link and uh, we'll uh, take it from there. there. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, David, nice to see you. It looks like you had a question. Do you have a question? Uh, just, just for Av, uh, just uh, regarding the, the tech, tech um, you know, you know, when, when I, I work, work on corporate events for, for clients, clients um, having, having, having them, them present better is always the goal. Um, and, and so the touch, touch screen, screen there, uh, like your vision, your, your, your software and your, your suite, uh, I guess, I guess would, would work, work best using, using uh, a touch, touch screen like that, that where you can have, have the presenter standing, standing like you did and presenting. And, but then, then that, they're, they're going to have to be comfortable using that, that as well, well right? Is it? Yeah, I mean, th that's the ultimate, right? The ultimate is, and we can. We can again refer to you with partners. We can show you what we, I, what I buy. Uh, we don't sell any hardware at all, but we have, mm -hmm. you know, I've tested everything. That's the ultimate setup because if you are talking to a large audience like a webinar, there's nothing better than talking to a, a whiteboard. And Nick, how many minutes did you practice this morning? Just letting you know, he came into the office this morning to do the practice. That's all it is. Yeah, it's it's very easy to use, David. Right. Uh, I I gotta tell you, um, Ab turned to me and he said. You've come to life, like, I, 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 because I get to present. It feels like I'm in um, workshop mode or, or keynote mode, and it is a lot of fun. Now, um, just to finish yeah. off the answer, yeah. you don't need a touch screen. We can do everything with a mouse and keyboard uh, on your laptop, and if you're interested, I can show you. And as I t said, the, uh, we'll, we'll give everybody free licenses. I'll teach you how to present, and, and the software itself is only 30 bucks. So it's not like it's a, an expensive piece of software. Uh, and I'll personally onboard you. Um, I would love to hear about your stories. I, this is a very big, passionate uh, project for us. Mm. This is, uh, we're not charging a lot. It's $30. So, yeah. but if you wanted yeah. to engage with me one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we can discuss how we can set up training so that you can take this service and, and show all of your our keynote speakers. All right, all right, thank, thank you. you. Uh, we are at time, and I, I always like to respect everybody's time. I also, two quick things. First of all, thank you to you, Av, uh, for your insights and, and opening your doors and sharing this technology with me and f with everybody. Two, thank you all for taking the time. Uh, I know how many opportunities there are for joining in on webinars and different experiences. Um, you chose to spend your time with us. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, and 
Uh, I also hope to be able to start doing this as we get closer and further in, or near in the future together so we can start doing evening exper experiences and events or uh, longer term. So thank you for your time, thank you for your interest, and, um, and thank you again to Av and for the host here at Vizetto. So thank you. Uh, everybody stay well and good luck with uh, your, the rest of your week and go ahead and communicate with impact. Thank you.